and welcome everyone to this week's podcast. This is the energy forecast for the last week of August 2021. Welcome, Denny. Hi. So I'm going to start this week and I'm going to dive straight into the numerology for this week. And so we are in week 34. And so in, through numerology, we're actually in a seven week in a five year. So those are the influences that we're really working with um, this week. So the seven energy uh, of this week represents really the intellect and the mind and the way that you think. Uh, so this week brings opportunities to really test your belief system or your thoughts to kind of stretch your mind or maybe even reframe the way that you think about things. You might uh, also throughout this week experience light bulb moments or deeper realizations around something that maybe has been holding you back or limiting you even in some way. But I feel um, that a lot of what you might experience this week will be related to the bigger picture and how you are showing up in the world as an individual. And we were definitely working with that energy last week. We spoke about that. I think both you and I, Denny, brought that into our pieces last week. Um, and so we're still working through a little bit of that energy this week, but with a little more focus on your mind and your thoughts around this. So seven energy really inspires you to dive deep, to dive deep within you, to look deep within yourself. And then the five energy guides you towards realizing how your inner changes affect the world around you. Um, so that really means that you'll be looking, I think, more closely at your old patterns, maybe, or your habits or your outdated beliefs, and then beginning to probably more consciously embody new and different ideals to work with. The five and energy, uh, sorry, five and seven energy of this week really guides you into, I think, understanding that the changes that you make within your own thoughts and belief system can really support the changes that are needed within the collective itself. We're going through a big shift at that level at the moment. And that, I think, is why we're also dealing with a lot of that truth energy that's coming up as our belief system starts to shift and change around what our truth is. So seven energy really wants you to understand and deepen your awareness. It wants you to dive in. It wants you to ask questions. It wants to know more. It's the energy of learning, of knowledge and understanding. So this energy really reveals what is lying underneath the surface so that you can really better understand yourself and, of course, then the world around you. Now, as we're confronted at this time with more unsettling changes in the world, this energy can really help you to deepen your own truth and your awareness of the matters that actually affect us all. So, for example, when we think of what's going on in Afghanistan at this time, you may be guided to rethink what this means to you on a personal level. It's easy sometimes to be so caught up within our own experience or even so overwhelmed with what is actually going on in the world around us that we almost switch off to protect ourselves. We kind of back away from it sometimes. And the energy of this week won't really allow you to do that. It will guide you to look more deeply within yourself to change your thinking or deepen your awareness of self so that you really understand that the inner shifts that you make do have a really powerful influence on the external world around you. And often when we're guided just to do these small changes within ourselves, we can really overlook the ripple effect that that has in our external world. But it's so important to, to sort of understand that. And I think you'll be guided this week to see that in a new way. The seven archetype really longs for depth of connection 
And so you will be guided to look at your beliefs and really see what needs to shift so that you can deepen your connection within the collective itself. This energy is really all about honoring as well time for stillness and space. This is another aspect of seven energy. Um, and with so much shifting and changing, particularly within your mind this week, you will find that you may need more space around that. So you may be guided, therefore, to seek out time alone, away from people, and to help you to integrate those personal shifts in your own awareness that are happening. So allow yourself to surrender to that without placing any guilt on yourself if you're taking time out. Remember that this is a way of supporting yourself through the huge internal changes that are taking place. And it really helps you to, I think, step more into service with others if you do this from a place of power instead of a place of depletion. So the energies of the, the moment are a little bit uncomfortable to sit in and you can't avoid that, it's there, but you can make choices to support yourself through the uncomfortableness in the best possible way that you can. So rest, uh, surrender, space, stillness, peace, nature, they're all sort of ways to support the internal and external changes that are taking place that you're experiencing this week. So that was what uh, the numerology uh, brought up for me this week, Denny, and I'm really interested to, uh, to hear how that aligns with what you're bringing up as well. I think bringing up is not the nicest expression, is it? <laughs> bringing into the conversation. Yeah, I'm, I'm so pleased that you offered lots of ways for, um, for support this week because um, difficult and uncomfortable are words that really come up for me this week um, so just those supporting practices um, I think will really help in um, moving through this week um, in a in a um, easier lighter way so it feels like a very deep week um, as always you know I have a sort of, sort of an idea of what's going on above um, but usually I wake up on these mornings and just you know just open to what might um, might come out and um, I, I start with choosing my card um, and the card I chose today um, is the hunter which instantly I looked at and you know as always I don't know why we get this but I just wanted to put it back but I thought no okay I'll, I'll, I'll follow that thread of the warrior or the warrior s and see where it leads me um, and fee, I've, I don't know why, but in my, um, in my, in my mind, I've had this new planet, Eris. Um, Eris was discovered, I think, not that long ago, just in like 2005, um, as a, much, much further out than Pluto, um, and about the same size, I think a little bit smaller and has, has been um, called a dwarf planet. I think Pluto was, and has been relegated to planet again um oh. but um i think i think because i mean if you look at astrology when you look at the importance of pluto um and then with this 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 new planet eris um i don't know that she's going to be a dwarf planet for long but she's very very far out but she has um it's it's amazing when a new planet comes in the awareness that that brings into the collective because the outer line planets um, are more of a collective, more of them about um, the times wherein they're, they're, um, um, they're big energies that have such a big effect on the planet. So I was called to look at planet Eris and um, Eris sits in and has sat in a square with Pluto um, for all of 2000, since 2019. Um, and I, I did a little bit of a you know rabbit hole look into okay let, let's let's just see what what this is about and interestingly interestingly enough coincidentally synchronistically um, there are two times that planet Eris and Pluto conjunct in two thousand and twenty one and one of them is this week. 
Oh, <laughs> the next one is on October 8th. And that's, sorry, I said go conjunct, but it's not conjunct, it's square, which is even, um, which is even bigger. Um, I think everyone knows that we're, we're in, the, in the year of um, Uranus and Saturn squaring and what that's bringing. And, that, and um, actually, you know, behind the scenes, behind a lot of this um, that a lot, of other, a lot of people may not know is the square that's been happening between Eris and Pluto and this exact conjunction, sorry, exact square, I keep saying conjunction, um, that happens on the 26th of this month. What does that mean? I'll just go into what planet Eris, what that the 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 myths or the mythology around um, what that planet's energy means. Um, actually, first of all, I might start with Pluto because Pluto was known first. So Pluto was known as the god of the underworld. This is the planet that brings the unconscious conscious, that uncovers truths. Uh, that uncovers those truths that maybe we don't want to look at. It's that real discomfort, but um, it, it gets stirred up. And by looking and by walking through it and making it conscious, we can heal it um, and accept it as a part of us and, and, and um, shine light on those darker areas. Uh, I guess if you call um, Pluto making the unconscious conscious. You look at planet Eris as being the feminine consciousness. And she's also known as the planet of discord. Uh, she, it's, it's, it's this, what is squarely facing difficult truths, but to do with the feminine. And I say the feminine, and I know I often, um, just want to point out that I'm talking feminine and masculine, not male and female. So there's feminine parts of all of us. When denied recognition or inclusion, um, this planet can wreak havoc. So I'll just sort of park that because it's this, it, there's so many pieces here. And, and I love that you brought up this um swing between what's happening out in the world and what's happening within because when I was looking at this I was just feeling so overwhelmed with the meaning of this to the bigger world um, and then also wow what does this mean inside I mean I have a huge I mean the planet Eris <laughs> I know I'm getting so muddled here <laughs> um, the planet Eris is for all of our generation in Aries so we all have um, her in Aries so if you wanted to find out more about your placement you'd need to find out whether whether there was a placement with um, your sun sign your moon sign or your ascendant and that might give you an idea of whether she's more um, awake in your personal chart I know for me she's sitting in my ascendant and is conjunct with Hecate my natal Hecate um, it just so happens that Eris is also conjunct with Hecate in the sky, which I kind of like because Hecate is this deep feminine wisdom. She's an elder, a witch, um, the goddess of crossroads. I like that she, um, Eris, who's a little bit out of control, has this um, the wisdom of this deep feminine um, um, knowledge with her. Feels like a... Um, uh, gives her some kind of depth and grounding to her um, ability to completely wreak havoc for the sake of wrecking havoc. Uh, oh, I'm just trying to think of which bits I'm going to bring in. Uh, so we have Eris sitting in Aries. Uh, and Aries is autonomy, our rights, um, the self. And you've got Pluto sitting in Capricorn, which is society and government and tradition and customs. Um, and it's not lost on me what's going on in the world. Um, a lot of um, astrologers out there, some astrologers out there that look into Eris, talk about the plat, um, Pluto and Eris square as being COVID. Um, and this uh, um, 
need to, it's kind of do or die. Either we change our ways or we'll be um, extinct. We're, you know, in that COVID time and what we're doing to the planet. I know it sounds huge, but actually we're living in huge times. And with those two squaring off, it feels like this really big energy that's forcing us into um, change or you'll be forced to change, which is kind of COVID. Um, but there's also this feeling of Eris being the feminine consciousness. And I look um, at what is um, unfolding in Afghanistan, which I'm so interested that you brought that up, that up too, because uh, I think a, a lot of us are feeling for what is going on and how backward um, the moves have gone there with the, with the Taliban taking um, control. But what does that mean for the feminine of that country? And with Eris so huge in our skies right now, squaring Pluto, um, I'm, it gives me hope that this is going to bring um, through a lot of pain, but hope that this is a stand for the feminine ways and that it isn't going to go backward. I mean, that is my belief. We are not going to go backwards. We're in a very different place now in um, accepting and bringing to light our feminine sides than we were um, before um, the Taliban came into power or when it's when it started um, a decade ago or however long ago it was. So it feels like that there we are in such heavy times and it can feel like the planets that are out there are um, so overwhelming. And, you know, when you've got a planet called the planet of discord, you can feel like it's happening against us but actually you know as always these energies work for us and even if the changes are uncomfortable ultimately they're leading us to um, a better place a better way um, more integrated within ourselves more conscious and that brings me to that's all what's going on out there how can we look at those two parts inside of us, the parts that we don't want to look at, the parts that we've kept hidden, um, and those now the, the heiress, the, the part of the feminine that wants to wreak havoc, um, bringing those to this squaring. So within you, there is probably this huge discomfort. I know I feel it. And I know that um, when I look at Eris, I can really feel that place of um, when denied recognition or inclusion can wreak havoc. I think just sitting with that, where do you not feel included? Where do you feel like you're not being seen? And rather than wrecking havoc, can you excavate that place, sit with it, bring the light to it and allow it to arise however it does through whatever practices um, you have, uh, you're comfortable with. So whether that is movement, whether that is some form of um, um, diving into um, archetypes, um, whether that's meditation, whether it's nature, I think that these practices are going to be really valuable to us during this week, but also this time, because it's bigger than just this week. This is a square, an exact square, but we're sitting in this energy um, for the whole of 2021. Um, and the energy to me and it just feels volcanic. I'm just going to say that word because it's just what comes to mind. You've got a fire sign and an earth sign squaring off against each other. Um, it's big. It's a big week. <laughs> I actually, I mean, other than the fact that we are sitting in the full moon energy from yesterday um, and that the sun enters Virgo today, um, it's all around the squaring energy of Eris and Pluto for me this week, Fee. Oh, my goodness. Wow. I wrote so much down while you were speaking there because there was so much that was talking to me personally. And um, 
and and I wanted to remember so I could reflect back to you when you'd finished without interrupting your flow but I love that reflection around Pluto uh, bringing the unconscious into consciousness because that's exactly what seven energy is all about too it's that you know bring diving in deep and bringing it up to the surface to be looked at and you know that that thing you said these are heavy times and you know my natural way of working in in any capacity is let's look for the light <laughs> you know it's a it's a dark time but let's find the light in that you know we we need to go through it but let's find the light in it but I'm kind of at a place this week of feeling you know it's, it's a heavy time so just get over yourself and deal with it it's that kind of energy we've just got to plow plow through it we've just got to keep going uh, and do look at the ways that we can support ourselves through this because it's happening. We can't, we can't um, avoid it or suppress it or push it away. We've just got to find our way through it um, in the best possible way. But the, the piece there that I really uh, wanted to acknowledge was the, the, the um, understanding around the planet Aries. So someone asked me a couple of years ago about this planet uh, and was reflecting themselves, was asking questions around how does this affect your chart? You know, it's this new planet and how does it affect everything in your chart? And of course, I had to say, well, I have no knowledge of these things, um, so I can't help you with that. But I remember um, at the time thinking, oh, that's really interesting. So it's lovely to bring, I think, that into the conversation a little bit more and, and how you've described it there has given me a little bit more of an understanding around it too. So thank you for that. But the piece around that that I really uh, felt into was that you were talking about how this is supporting the feminine, the rise of the feminine in this way at the moment. And, you know, this is what this is a century that we're in the 2000s that two energy is all about that feminine energy and and you know at, as we look at it this week and we both mentioned um quite independently what's going on in afghanistan and the suppression of of women that's happening there it feels very much like an invitation to look at how we can keep rebalancing our own feminine energy and bringing that more into awareness because as we heal that individually we bring great healing into the collective because there's so much to heal we talked about this last week around the timelines and the, our ancestral lines and how everything is shifting and we're healing so much around the feminine at the moment so it's an invitation, I feel, to really understand how important that is as we do that work within ourselves, that we can help and support those women in that way in Afghanistan and what they're going through by working with it within ourselves to put that energy into the collective to support them in some way. So when you feel that there's not anything you can do, that is something that you can do within yourself to work with that. Mm. Also, what comes to mind for me, um, Fee, is around this feminine consciousness, what that actually is. Um, and as we've been speaking in, in a lot of our um, conversations lately, where um, there's kind of been this reframing, uh, not reframing, but there's just this different look at what feminine consciousness and what that feminine is in the world. Um, and, you know, it, it's all around intuition. It's all around creativity. It's all around birthing. Um, it's all around um, being in joy and being at one with nature and respecting um, others as ourselves and all of those principles of the feminine. That's what is um when that's denied, when that isn't included, that's when all of the, you know, that this, this planet of Eris comes to light and, and fights for it and will fight for it to death. And pretty much if we lose those things off the planet, then that's what we're faced with anyway. Mm -hmm. So in a way, a way of fighting back is to bring those things more alive in our lives. Mm -hmm. it it it's kind of a different way of looking at fighting a war against something is just making our feminine more visible and more seen and more awake so as a practice dive into the feminine energies of yours create something um 
appreciate nature, plant something, um, look at following your intuition rather than just following the way that um, society is telling you to. All of these things will bring an awareness to this feminine place. And I mean, it's my belief that we change it within, we change it in, on the outside. And, you know, just this may help um, the acceptance of these ways in, in the world. I love that. Yeah. And it and incidentally brings me beautifully into showing my cards for today. <laughs> um, and the first one I I pulled was this one. Uh, I don't know if you can see it very clearly, but it's actually called the Wind Goddess. Um, and this is from the Dream Dust Shamanic Tarot deck. So this card really I felt seemed to represent the energies of the week in regards to where you're all being asked or we're all being asked to focus this week, which is, of course, our minds. And uh, it really seemed to represent the, those energies and that focus and bringing that focus within ourselves. She is the perceptive thinker, and I feel that she is supporting the journey into inner inquiry you know, where we go for our intuition to broaden our perspectives and change our belief system. And there is a strength I felt that this card represents that um, really allows you to find clarity and depth to your new perspectives. And it felt very much to me as if it was a feminine holding of the masculine space of the mind. So it felt like a really a different a way of approaching things through our belief system so it just felt so aligned to the energy of the week but then I also pulled a second one which is unusual for me but it happened and it was this one which is the four of fire um, and this card I felt represented kind of new foundations and structures that are being created I feel that it brings in a more solid footing for where we are going and what we're starting to create uh, as the new world starts to unfold around us. So it does also, I feel, support the inner changes, you know, that we're making first within ourselves and then how that helps us to restructure our outer changes in, say, our family or our community or in the collective itself. So these two cards both were very different in the energy that they held, but both felt really supportive for the week ahead. And then I also, maybe to finish today, have a message from the Akasha, uh, to finish for me, that is anyway. Um, and so the message that came through uh, this week, again, I think was really very supportive of, of what we're experiencing this week and what we're all going through. Uh, so the message that I received this morning was that it can be difficult at times to find your place in the world when everything around you is constantly changing. If you are experiencing feelings of helplessness, lack of hope, or even questioning how you can make a difference in the world, um, or in a, in a world that seems so focused on self-destruction, you are being guided deep within. When the external world is in conflict with your own experience, the most powerful place to seek what you need is held within your own heart. Your soul holds ancient wisdom. It has transcended many incarnations through disruption to joy. It can support you in this moment to keep finding your place of truth. From that place deep within, you can then recognize that your choice to be here now is driven by your desire to see the world evolve, to strengthen your will and empower you in the knowledge that your inner journey is, as a, is a valid and necessary piece of the journey of mankind at this time. So a big message, I felt, but big energies. And, you know, and that's what we're sitting in this week. Oh, yes. What a big week. Um, there was this sense, Fee, as, as, um, as you were talking then, um, that I felt to bring up around Eris, 
um, there's this part of her that um, she um, she's that apple. <laughs> she's um, she presented this apple that um, that these goddesses um, Aphrodite. There's a few of the the Greek in the Greek pantheon. Um, all wanted this apple and fought over it. And when looking at that, I got the sense of um, there's a big something around sisterhood as well. So if that's something maybe that um, comes up um, around um, joining together, regardless of our um, differences of what sides we sit on on the on the issues that are out there that that really it's just a time of bringing our feminine energies together um, despite our differences um, that the togetherness of the feminine is really important right now that unless we recognize our sisters unless we're a lot more loving in the space of our sisters and accepting of, of it all um, then there's also you know we, we're unless we all rise and none of us do um, that felt kind of like an important piece as well absolutely I love I love that reflection back around that it is you know it is rising and, and you know we've experienced waves of it rising in different ways over the last few years uh, and it's becoming you know it, I feel like we're, we're in a, a different shift we're in another one of those powerful energy shifts with it which is always an opportunity for us to dive deeper and evolve more quickly and that's what it, this feels like at the moment yeah and when there's these big aspects happening in the skies there are opportunities. I mean, like I said, there are big times and there's big change, but such an immense opportunity for us to move forward in a way we've never moved before. Yeah, too right. That's what it's all about. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, well, you know, I think enjoy the week ahead in the best way that you can. It's a big week and a powerful week and therefore a week of change and evolving.